Hello there guys, RMP792 here. Right, after finishing off a very ranty vlog about Batman v Superman, I'm going to talk about something that was fun. Um, this weekend I was at the British Federation of Historical Swordplay Spring Exchange. Uh, as you can probably tell, I've got a little bit of con flu, um, which, let's face it, it always happens when you get a bunch of people together from different parts of the country, so, and just they swap diseases. But uh, it was a good weekend. A lot of fun to be had. Um, I actually recorded footage of the Longsword Tournament. I managed to get every bout. Uh, so I'm going to edit all that together into one video and put that up as soon as I can do. So probably tomorrow, I'm hoping. Um, so yeah, it was a very good weekend. Um, in case you're wondering, there were you know, a bunch of different workshops. So basically a series of hour and a half workshops and then each day ended with the tournaments so there were what were the four tournaments back sword saber and then on day two it was rapier and longsword so i'd say the longsword was the only one i actually managed to record but i did get every match and um as, as i will put that up incidentally if you've never seen actual footage from hema events before uh don't be expecting long complex ridiculously twirly fights put it this way each bout was to the kill so basically the rules were fairly simple clean strike to the head or the chest is a kill a glancing blow to the chest or a hit to any limb is a wound three wounds totals a kill and so and after each kill the match is over and there was a point system based on whether you, you know, whether you got a clean kill whether you took any wounds and how many wounds you took and things like that so Yep, you know, that and that's basically how they decided who progressed between the uh, the preliminary rounds because there was eight competitors, so they split them into four groups, into two groups rather. Um, so all the four people in each group faced each other, and then the people with the most, the two people with the most points from each group went forward into the semi-finals. They did another uh, round where everybody fought each other, and then they did the f and then the people the people with the two most points went off into the bout for the gold and silver and the people with the two fewer points went into the bout for the bronze and fourth place so that's how uh, they did it and the and so yes if you're expecting long complicated fights the longest piece of footage i recorded was something like 53 seconds that was the longest of the fights the shortest was four seconds yeah <laughs> Longsword combat is quick and it's brutal, but it's it's endlessly fascinating to watch. So, as I I'll, I'll edit them all together into one long video and, and just slap it up uh, probably tomorrow. So yeah, that that was good. Um, which workshops did I do? First, I did the English longsword workshop, which was very interesting because there's an awful lot of tip to tip stuff which I'm not used to doing. Because most swords sword play is quote is found quote unquote at the bind, which is basically when the two swords have clashed. And that's when most of the actual sword play happens. You know, according to all the manuals. Everything around that is all about getting to that point where you can actually do stuff. Because once you're in the bind, you have at least a little bit of control. If you're swinging in at him and he's swinging at you from a completely different angle, and you're not making any attempts to actually interfere with each other's blades, you're both going to die. You know, it, I would be fascinated to find out how many people on medieval battlefields killed each other near enough the same time. I suspect it's a hell of a lot. You know, people killing the other guy without sufficiently protecting themselves and dying as a result. So I'd be kind of fascinated to see that. So yeah, the English longsword class was interesting. Um, uh, the next one I did was... What was the next one I did? I did not get much sleep over this weekend. <laughs> I was up past midnight on both days, and then, of course, I was sword fighting all day, so I was a bit knackered. But anyway. Um... <laughs> what the hell was it? I'm going to kick myself when I finally remember. Um... Oh, yeah, it was Rapier and Cloak. Um, which is, Rapier and Cloak's all kinds of fascinating because it's using the cloak as a weapon. Because it basically came about where... It was an ev it was eff effectively an evolution of rapier and dagger because it came about because you weren't allowed to carry daggers in certain cities, so they adapted and said, "Well, what if we use our uh, offhand to you know, use our cloak? So wrap a cloak around, you know, and, a, and if you've got a you know, a hand with a cloak around it, you can easily deflect a rapier with it. You know, if you get stabbed directly through, it's going to go through your cloak and into your arm, and that's going to hurt. 
but you can deflect off to the side and then stab them while they're distracted. And if all else fails, you can just throw your cloak straight in the enemy's face and stab him through it while he's distracted. So that was fun. Um, what else did I do? Uh, I also did the fighting from a chair workshop. That was quite fun. Um, because, you know, it, it, the guy immediately apologised for lying to us all in the uh, actual title of the thing because his comment is it's not so much fighting from a chair it's starting a fight from a chair so it's you know for example if you're in a pub or a bar or whatever you know and some guy's being uppity and he comes over and he's you know and, a, and he's trying to punch you while you're sat down here's how you basically rise and fight effectively you know and you can actually use a spring from the chair to actually really get in close and, and do some damage that was actually the one where i picked up my only wound of the weekend which i don't know if the camera's good enough to see but tiny scratch there. That was the only wound I picked up on the entire weekend, which was, you know, good. And that's just because, you know, part of the uh, pantomime was to basically, you know, mind punching or slapping each other while we're sort of sitting down and then we rise in to fight it. And yeah, one of the slaps basically uh, clipped me with a nail there. <laughs> so yeah, my only wound of the weekend it was from a girly slap that uh, just nicked me with a nail. <laughs> so yeah, that's how safe Hema is if you're doing it properly, by the way. So yes, that, that that was actually quite an interesting workshop because it ended with a game of musical chairs but violent musical chairs. Which is basically like normal musical chairs except anyone who doesn't have a chair gets to attack anyone who does and they've got to use some of the techniques to fight you off. So I, I at one point actually ended up getting picked up and carried halfway across the hall which was fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that was a pretty good workshop. Um... Next one I did was the uh, Bartatsu. What? Bartatsu? Bartitsu? I think it's Bartitsu, but anyway. Which was basically a um, Victorian martial art where it's basically a guy called. Is it Bartonthorpe? I think she said it was Bartonthorpe. Basically went, um, you know, travelling all over the world and learned various Eastern martial arts, including uh, Jiu Jitsu. And then basically came back to Victorian England and sort of, you know, taught them to gentlemen. So it's this. So this particular workshop was on fighting with a cane or a walking stick. And it's this really bizarre combination of incredibly civilized and incredibly violent. <laughs> you know, so it's it's you know jab jab, hook around the neck with uh, the hook of your uh, thing, and then yank them down. You know, and they'll smash into the floor. Or if you want, you can stick your knee in the way on the way down. <laughs> you know, and it it very much feels like you know, and yes, and leave the ruffian bleeding in the gutter where he belongs, and just walk off with your cane. So that that was actually a really fun workshop. So yeah, it was a it was a really good weekend. There was some very interesting stuff on display, and yeah, I'm very glad that I went. As I say, I will upload the longsword tournament footage uh, as soon as I get around to editing it. Once I have you know an opportunity to do so, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, so yeah, good weekend. I enjoyed it. Um, it was nice to see uh, my old housemate again because. Because he still lives in York, so I can actually kip on his sofa. Or actually, he had a spare room this time. Wonderful. So I had an actual bed for a couple of days rather than the sofa, which was nice. Um, so yeah, lovely to uh, do that. And yeah, good weekend generally. Really enjoyed it. Learned some interesting new uh, things. You know, so, some interesting new types of violence. And yeah, it was a good weekend. So I think that's pretty much all I've got to say about the Spring Exchange. Uh, if you're interested in HEMA type stuff, I do genuinely recommend you try and find you know, find a group somewhere because as a general rule of thumb, HEMA groups are really, really friendly people. I mean, there's one called the Wolf's Head Combat Academy and they are some of the nicest people I've ever met. I just would not get anywhere near them when they've got a sword in their hand because they are mental. <laughs> yeah, but they are really nice, really friendly people and... I've never met a group of people who are nicer than HEMA folks, which is probably at least partially because what we're doing is potentially very dangerous, and we know that if we tick somebody off, they could hurt us by accident. So we're all just really nice and friendly to each other. So, uh, yeah. So it was a good weekend, and I will get that footage uploaded as soon as I am able and as soon as I have a chance to edit it. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in future videos.